What's up world, Matt here. And today I'm really excited because I'm gonna be sharing with you two recipes that are really special to me. These are recipes that were taught to me by people that I love and now I'm gonna share them with you so you can get a taste of my world. So before we get started and I tell you about these two recipes from my world, I wanna hear from you. What do you know how to cook? What are things that you help your family cook? What are some of your specialties or something you want to learn how to cook? Why don't you pause the video and practice telling me what are some of the things that you like to cook, you know how to cook, or you want to learn to cook, depending on your experience. Pause the video and let me know a few ideas. Mm -hmm. Nice, thanks for sharing. Now, I want to share with you the first recipe while we review some common kitchen actions so that as you're learning how to make this recipe, you're learning how to say these actions in English so that you can understand what I'm telling you. So I'm going to show you an action and ask you what it is. You might already know this. If you do, say it. And if not, I'll say it and share it with you. So what action is this? Yeah, this is chop. I chop onions and I chop tomato and I chop cilantro. Okay, next. What action is this? Do you know what I'm doing right now? Let me grab the line. I'm adding, I'm adding tomato, I'm add onion, I add cilantro, and I add lime. Then I might take this and add some pepper, add some salt, add some chili, Ooh. add some cumin. And then a little bit of cilantro. All right, next up. What action is this? Yeah, this is stir. I stir the onion. I stir the tomato. I stir the lime juice, the cilantro, the seasonings. I stir this until it's one mixture. This is what my partner would call chismol. It's like a Honduran salsa or a pico de gallo. Um, and my partner, my girlfriend who's from Honduras, this is one of her favorite toppings, a chismol. So I wanted to share that recipe with you. So we've got our delicious chismol and you might be wondering, how do I eat it? Well, you might just take a chip and dip it in and try it. It's really good. You could also use it as a condiment or a topping with some other food. So let's say I prepare the cheese mold. I might start by making this so that it has a lot of time to be mixed together with the lime juice. And then I'll put this aside. The next thing I might do is cook something to go with it. What about this? What action is this? You're gonna have to imagine here. Pretend that I have a stove. <sighs> Fire in the kitchen. And I take a pot and I add some water and I add some beans and I cook until bubble, 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 bubble. What action is this? Yeah, this is boil. When I heat up water in a pot with some beans or even some rice, and then I wait for it to cook until it's really hot and the water is making bubbles, I boil something. The water boils, and as the water boils, the beans boil and they cook. So with my cheese mole, I'm gonna boil some beans, and I'm gonna boil some rice over here off camera. While I boil rice and beans to have with my cheese mole, I'll take a pan, put it on the stove, 
and get ready to do this action with some chicken. Imagine there's no bag. What action is this? Yeah, this is fry. I fry the chicken. It's gotta get both sides. While I boil the rice, I boil the beans, and I fry the chicken, I want to talk about two different types of cutting in the kitchen. We've already talked about chop. I chop tomatoes, I chop onions, and I chop cilantro for the cheese malt. When I finish the chicken and I'm done frying it, then I need to cut the chicken into pieces. But I'm gonna cut the chicken differently. I'm gonna use a long knife and I'm gonna use a motion like this to do what? Yeah, to slice. When you cut with a long back and forth motion and you cut a long, skinny, very thin piece, this is slice, right? We might slice chicken, slice bread, or even here I've sliced tomatoes. Now, in this recipe, we're not going to slice the tomatoes. We're going to slice the chicken because the action we use to cut the tomatoes, to cut the onions, and to cut the cilantro is a chop. A chop is an up and down motion. This knife is shorter, and I'm just gonna use it from the front to the back, up and down, and you'll hear a chop, chop, chop every time. So if I'm going up and down, what action is it? Yeah, a chop. And if I'm taking a long knife and I'm going front to back, what action is it? Yeah, that's a slice, nice. So I've prepared my chismo and I'm boiling rice and beans and frying chicken. I have one more thing I wanna make to make this dinner spectacular. What action is this? Yeah, this is mix. Let's say I wanna make a dessert, like some delicious brownies. I might put some brownie mix in, add in a little bit of oil and Add in one egg, just like the ingredients on the back of the box say. And then I'm going to mix this around until all three of these things are one consistent mixture. When I'm stirring a lot, a lot, a lot, and I want everything to become one ingredient, just the batter to make brownies, then I'm going to do some mixing. I might use a whisk to mix. That's different from before. When I had the cheese mole, I really just want to combine the ingredients. And so I take a spoon and I stir. It's a similar action, but the result is different. Here, you can still see different ingredients. I see the onion, I see the tomato, I see the cilantro. I can't see the salt, but I can taste the salt. But when I'm making brownies, I'm going to mix until I can't see anything. I don't wanna see the egg. I wanna see one ingredient, brownie mix, a batter, right? So that's this action to mix. Then once I have my brownie mix, I'll put it over here, here. take this and put it in the oven. And what do I need to do to the brownies? Yeah, I need to bake the brownies until they're done. That's gonna take a, quite a while, so why don't we practice some more English and we'll get back to this later. Now, I wanna practice these action words with a little Matt says. That's like the game Simon says, but my name is Matt. So I'm gonna say an action and I want you to do a gesture. Then I'll show you the ge correct gesture and you can see if you are right or if you need to practice that one some more. So the first action is chop onions. Show me a gesture for chop onions. Yeah, you might chop like this, up and down. Chop, 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 chop. All right, show me a gesture for mix a sauce. 
Let's say we want to make spaghetti and you need to mix a sauce. Show me a gesture. Yeah, you might grab a bowl and mix a sauce. Okay, show me a gesture for boil pasta. What do you need to do to boil pasta? Yeah, you might have a pot and some hot water. Boil, 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 boil. Okay, show me a gesture for add salt. Yeah, you might add in some salt. All right, show me a gesture for fried chicken. Let's say we want to cook chicken on, in some oil in a pan. Show me fried chicken. Yeah, the pan and I like the sound effect. Okay, show me an action for slice bread. Nice. Remember, slice is a long cut. You move forward and backward with slice. Chop is up and down, but a nice slice is forward and backward. All right. Show me an action for stir the soup. Let's say we're cooking a soup and we want to stir the ingredients. Yeah, you might have a pot and slowly stir the soup. Remember, when we're trying to really mix something, we mix, 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 mix. But when we're just stirring, we can stir the soup a lot more slowly. Alrighty, last one. Show me a gesture for bake cookies. Let's say we want to make a dessert. Show me bake cookies. Yeah, I like to open the oven, put in the cookies, and close the oven. One, two, three. And then open the oven, take out the cookies, close the oven, and enjoy. Nicely practicing those actions. Let's see how you're doing with the pronunciation of these kitchen actions. I'm going to show you a picture and ask you an either or question. I want you to tell me which action matches what you see in the picture. So how about this first picture? Is this bake or fry? Yeah, this is bake. I'm bake some cookies. All right. How about for this next picture? Is this add? or boil. Yeah, this is boil. I boil water. Maybe I'm going to make pasta or rice or beans. All right, how about this next picture? This is a tricky one. Is this chop or slice? Hmm, what size are those pieces? Yeah, these pieces are long and thin. This is slice. Nice. Okay, picture number four. Is this mix or stir? Yeah, this is mix. Maybe I'm mixing some batter to make cookies. I mix the batter. All right, picture number five. Is this bake or fry? Yeah, I'm cooking this fish in oil. I fry the fish. All right, picture number six. Is this add or boil? Yeah, the action in the picture is add. I'm going to add vegetables to a soup. Nice. Okay, picture number seven, two more to go. Here's our other tricky one. Is this chop or slice? These vegetables have been cut, but they're in bigger chunks. I would say these vegetables are chopped. These are when you chop vegetables. All right, last picture. Is this mix or stir? Yeah, this is stir. These men stir the pots. There are some soups that have already been made, and they're just stirring as they cook. Slow and easy to stir. Nice job practicing those words and saying them out loud. All right, 
In the beginning of this video, I promised you two recipes, but so far I've really only taught you how to make one. That's my girlfriend's cheese small. Now I want to teach you to make one more recipe, and that's my mom's spaghetti. For me, this is the best spaghetti. It reminds me of home, of being a child, and of my mom, which makes me really happy. So I'm going to show you how I brainstorm for explaining a recipe, and then how I explain a simple recipe. Then, at the end of the video, I want you to try it out too. Just like I'm doing, I want you to brainstorm the ingredients and the actions for a recipe, and then try to record yourself explaining a recipe. You can send the video to a friend to actually share a recipe, or just watch your video to give yourself some feedback and reflect on your English. So, I'm going to share a recipe. The first thing I want to do are brainstorm ingredients. I want to make sure in my head I'm thinking about all of the food words that I'm going to need. Well, I'm going to make a pasta, so the first ingredient I need is some pasta. Um, the next ingredient I need is an onion. Another ingredient I need is some ground beef. Um, I also need some seasonings. I'm going to use oregano and some garlic salt. And the final ingredient I need is pasta sauce. Now, for your video, you don't need the actual objects, but I do think a good first step to sharing a recipe is to think, what are the ingredients that I'm going to use? Once you've thought about the ingredients, I think a good second step is to think, what are the different actions I'm going to do in this recipe? Those are the other key information words that you need to speak as you're explaining a recipe. Well, for me to make pasta, I need to boil water, I need to add ingredients as I'm cooking, I need to chop the vegetables, I need to fry the meat because the meat needs to be cooked, and as I'm cooking, I probably need to stir the ingredients. So I think those five action words and these ingredients are what I can use to explain my recipe. All right, so I've done step one, which is brainstorm my ingredients, and step two, which is brainstorm the actions. Now I'm going to show you step three, putting it all together and explaining a recipe. <clears throat> Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to make my mom's spaghetti. First, you're going to boil water in a pot. Second, you're going to add pasta into the water. Third, you're going to chop onions. Fourth, you're going to fry onions in olive oil. Next, you're going to add seasonings. Add oregano and add garlic salt. Next, stir the seasonings and onion together. After that, add the ground beef to the onions and seasoning and stir. Fry together for a while. Okay, next, add some pasta sauce and stir everything together. Get rid of the water, add the sauce to the pasta, and enjoy. That's my mom's spaghetti. Well, that's a recipe that's really special to me. Now I'd love to hear from you. What's a recipe that's special to you? Can you brainstorm the ingredients and the actions and then record yourself sharing that recipe out loud? I'd love to hear it. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks so much. Happy practicing and buen provecho.